Hello, I'm Alan Davis. You're listening to the Tuesday Club. This is the Arsenal podcast, and I've got Keith Dover with me this evening. How are you, Keith? I'm fine, Alan, but can I crave a boon, sir? A, s- a what? A boon, a small favour, a, a mere token. Can you just give me this one thing? Of course. Right. <laughs> I would like to introduce onto this show a very great man, the former president of Zimbabwe, <laughs> Mr Robert Mugabe, who will be doing the entire show impersonating the one and only Mr Ian Stone. Thank you. It's like he's in the room. He's brilliant, isn't he? Thank you. That election was rigged. <laughs> See? And Ian See? Stone is... <laughs> Who knows? Who, Who knows? knows what he's talking about? <laughs> Who knows what goes on in his head? He's the least of all. He knows less than you know. <laughs> Uh, it's the best way to be. Are you in Mugabe Media Lockdown, Keith? I'm in are there already. already. Are you already uh, there? No newspapers. August the 14th. August the it's 14th. It's over. It's over. No newspapers have been bought. I am not, uh, no radio has been listened to. I'm complete <laughs> lockdown already. But you have got a free newspaper about your person. I carry the standard merely for <laughs> personal <laughs> protection. <laughs> for yeah. And the society pages. <laughs> and the society pages. And, uh, <laughs> and the like house Photographs prices. of billionaire property developers and their trophy girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, there was one standing He's above He's got him pinned up all over his toilet. <laughs> <laughs> who are all those people? I don't know. There's pages of them. <laughs> pages I don't of, know who Pages of property developers. <laughs> Socialites. Building enormous <laughs> towers of empty flats <laughs> for the good of the nation. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Not on, this Keith. nation, obviously. Not the this, Chinese no, nation. The Chinese nation, yeah. <laughs> Keith, we lost one game to the champions. They're it's the good. first time we've lost back-to-back home games against Manchester City since the 30s. That was my favourite right? stat of the weekend. And we were quite good then. Yeah, yeah. we were a good side then. Uh, of course, just... Manchester City are now just Manchester City in name only, but that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't affect their supporters, who are absolutely in heaven, watching them in the away end all, all game at the weekend. I thought, God, they're having a good time. Oh, it they? must be good, must must be it? marvellous, must be marvellous, must You're looking at all, all that those talent. years with Ferguson over there at Old Trafford, all that horror going there every season, <laughs> them ripping the piss out of you, crying into your beer after every game. I don't even want to go down there. We've got to go down there. And now they're just laughing their heads off. And it's carnage at Man United, who last season mm. finished second. And if there weren't billionaire Arab oil men taking over Man City, he would have walked the league. Oh, yeah. And they're all going about how Pogba hates Mourinho and he's saying he things does. about him. And there's all the discord behind the scenes, but they would have won it in the past. Oh. <laughs> well, that's, what you, <laughs> that's why you don't get really envious of Manchester City fans, because you th- they've been through hell. They've what? been down at Division 3. Well, I am envy that they've got the money, but I, I don't begrudge them it somehow. I they've remember the playoff hell. final game. Yeah. Gillingham, I remember it well. Man, so City did they. Fans, Man City fans left, didn't they? At 2 0 down. Yeah. In injury time. They were back in Manchester by the time they. <laughs> <laughs> we won. Paul, Paul Dickoff We playing. drew. Did they draw or win? Did they win that game? They won the game there. Was it on pen- I can't remember. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, okay, Gillingham didn't. I was following Gillingham mm. at the time. Ah, that's why. Mm. Were you at that game? No. I watched it in uh, Marbella. Right. With probably half of Huddersfield Town's reserves. All the <laughs> people who hang around my oh, right. in, the, in June or whenever it was. But anyway, mm. so yeah, we we, uh, we played Manchester City at the weekend, listener, and um, we got, well, I was going to say bat- we hammered, but yeah. what I would say is with about half an hour to go, we're, we're a goal it. down. Mm. And we look quite lively and everyone's giving as much as they can. And they were trying hard, they want to do well. And I thought City were looking a little bit tired. I thought if, they, if you'd said to them then, we'll give you a 1-0, they'd have bitten your hand off. Lacazette missed a good chance. Lacazette, that, was, that was really it close. sat up for him and you go, I'll just put it in the corner and he should have hit the target. He nearly did as well. That would have been... Oh, I know, I know. Just, that, was the, that was the if only in the game, was Lacazette's hmm. chance. I think they'd have won anyway, Man City, by the way. Do I do. Think? Yeah, I think, they're just, I think they'd have gone up a gear and I think they'd have won... Because they would have bought on De Bruyne and Jesus and who else they bought on? Leroy Sane. Leroy Sane, who are all pretty good. And and I so I think it would have been hard for us to hang on. But yeah. we were looking at that point when they scored the second, just not the stuffing out of us. Because it had taken us a while to get going in the game. It's so difficult. It's like playing Barcelona. It's mm. so difficult to get the ball. Once you've got the ball, they're all over you getting it back. You've got no time to do anything. Well, we're trying to play out from the back, aren't we? We oh. better check. We're trying to play out from the back and our two centre He really scored, didn't he? I mean, in a way... <laughs> Well, I'll go keep. Why I sort of wished it had gone in. To... <laughs> I, you know what? I wish it. Had, I wish it had hit the post. <laughs> Come back to. Gone him. back. Gone look, along the goal line. <laughs> hit the other post, and then he'd fallen on it. As it, it could have been the greatest 
blooper in the history of sport. And as it was, it was nothing really, was it? Yeah. He just miscued it and it went out for a corner. Well, we did take the piss though, didn't we? Oh, as yeah. A, as, as a crowd. crowd. The crowd the started taking the piss. And then he, he put his hand out, he went, yeah, all right. And then people kept taking the piss and then felt a bit bad about it because they all went, oh, come on, he's old goalkeeper. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. He's never been a, a, a midfielder, has he? No. He's not says Fabregas we've got in goal. So why do we keep giving it to him? Well, because they Stop wants, giving it to him. He wants to play out from the back. He doesn't want it. No, he doesn't want to play out from the back, but Emery <laughs> wants to play out from the back. He had 42 back. touches in the game. Is it, 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 the second of any Arsenal player. I mean, really, that is well, ridiculous. Well, what you're saying is he well. doesn't want it, but actually none of our defenders looked like they wanted it either. That's why they kept passing it back to No, him. a couple <laughs> of them were up in club level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where's Bellerin? He's in club level, he don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't know what they're supposed to do. The fullbacks, no. when he gets it, the fullbacks are supposed to disappear up the pitch. And watch while Shaka, who really seems to be on Mogadon, and the two centre backs contrive to lose it to mm. all these absolute live wire whippets that manages to see people there forward line. Not with. easy to play out from the back against Man City. No, it's not say. advisable, I would yeah, say. Yeah, I know, but if he's trying to implement the system, he can't the first game of the season, even if it is Man City, go, all right, I'll just hoof it up and see what happens. It's not like we've got big men up front. I mean, Aubameyang's all right, but it's not, it's not Giroud, is it? But well, I thought he was famous. Uh, Unai for adjusting his tactics according to the opposition. I think it was a, probably a mistake mm. to try and face Manchester City playing very obviously going to be a substandard Manchester City type game, right? You're going to lose 2 0, aren't you? I mean, you cannot get out. They press you so, so hard. There's no target up front. And check had all those touches way more than he's ever had in, you know, in, in games in the past. Yeah. Our two centre halves aren't blessed with a load of pace. It just seems like you put yourself in a load of trouble. But he obviously doesn't trust him to, to get it into Xhaka and get out and play that way. No. Normally you'd mm. knock it into a midfielder and he'd play it out to a fullback and, you, and then you'd start from there. I was, I was sitting there trying to figure out how did we used to get out. We didn't used to get <laughs> stuck in our penalty area, did we? We did used to be able to get up the field. I'm trying to actually remember. We can now. go over the halfway line. How have we do, yeah, do, but do it's we Man do City. Stuff? We have to just look at it all through the filter. The fact it's Man City's the best team we've been down in the Emirates in the last five years yeah but I look at it I'm and they're better now because they've got Morris Gundogan and I'm thinking is he that good no. Fernandinho is he that good no but they're playing in a brilliant team and it's great when you get the ball Keith could play in that team oh really no. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Keith could play right. in that I'm team I'm afraid I'm going to have to pull him up <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to pull him up yeah. I'm just saying if he managed to get the ball under control he'd have a lot of options <laughs> <laughs> yeah, falling over would be one of them. That'd be, the the rest. Main, that'd be the main option. <laughs> I'll get out of breath, put my socks on in the morning. <laughs> There's a lot of options that you would probably take before Stop passing. putting them on over your nose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't but, know what we, we couldn't get out at all. We couldn't, I don't know. We was, when, I didn't know at the beginning of the game who was going to get picked. I was quite excited, all these new players. I wonder who he's going to pick, where, where they're going to go. And then after a while, oh. We've still got him, mm. and we've still got him, <laughs> and we've still got him. Aaron Ramsey seemed to be playing the furthest forward of any of them. That was a bit wild. That was yeah, a bit wild. Was... He's not a target man, is he? <laughs> well, he hasn't been up to this point. He Maybe did... Emery sees something we don't. He's famously, if he does score a goal, usually coming onto the play, running from midfield. Arriving late. Arriving mm. late. Brian Robson, John Walk. That, that, kind of, that kind of a midfield. Yeah. Just like when he got his cup final winners, they were both like that. Running yeah. on to a... A centre forward back, playing, yeah. the, playing the ball in. I, I was a bit con- more concerned about the front three, if you like. Well, Ozil and Aubameyang and Lacazette, those three. Just Mika- didn't... And Mkhitaryan, Mkhitaryan. you forgotten because oh, he yeah. was <laughs> completely <laughs> anonymous. Right. Oh, was he there? Yeah. Yeah. Mkhitaryan and then Lacazette. <laughs> those, I just didn't think they did enough. That's what's going to win us games this year, right? Those guys. Yeah. And they, and they didn't, because you ain't going to get much from Mustafi and Xhaka and even Guendouzi's not a sort of player who's going to get goals for you, is he? I mean, hopefully one or so two, but you know what I mean? If I said to you, you can swap Ozil and Mkhitaryan for Mahrez and Sterling tomorrow, in a, in a you do it in a half. Oh, God, heart. yeah, absolutely. They're, yeah. But they're working in a system they understand. It's different for those boys. I, but they could have worked a bit harder, I Where think. are you going to play Mez Ozil to get a, a 9 out of 10 performance from him in any game? As, what, what? Barcelona. <laughs> Another team, yeah. yeah I think that's a team. perfectly yeah. fair point. Really, who was actually playing in a position that they seemed to be suited to, that they understood? It was exactly the same as it's been for the last two seasons. Uh, was it? I really? Mean, well, I mean, this trying to pass out from the back. pegs and round holes. But we've always done that. We've always played it out from the back. Not in this sort of way. Not with the when goalkeeper When he had Giroud, being... sometimes he'd go long a little bit. But... but not with the goalkeeper being so central to the whole thing. I mean, they're using those triangles, aren't they, and stretching the pitch and everything. But... But in the centre-halves... 
deeper than the 18 yard line but outside the box in that bit that bit of the pitch when I was a kid that was the only bit of the pitch that had grass on yeah right because no one ever, no went, one ever there, went there right yeah. but now that bit of the pitch is going to be really worn and the ground is <laughs> going to have to really work on it because <laughs> Socrates's heavy feet are going to be pounding around in that corner you really what you see you there Oh. That bit of the pitch should only ever be occupied by the right back, and that's if he's defended. Just, I've got to go back to the fact that we're playing Man City, and I don't know how you beat them. I'm not sure we can with the personnel we got. So you know what? Let's try at least try the system that we're going to try. Well, let's look at the goals that we, that we let in then, because when Raheem Sterling cut in, he went past Bellerin a bit easily, and then Guendouzi looked like he thought he was going to shoot. And kind of committed himself with both feet as a sort of a block, and then he'd lost his foot in. And he does, he does tend to rush to places and get there just in time. So mm. he didn't always look, he doesn't always look really balanced, does he? But he's young. But then Shaka's the next man over. So there you want someone really throwing their body in front of it. Two strides and then horizontal, mm. Scott Parker style. Shaka or has been known Nigel to do Winterburn that. style and blocking it. And what he did was he turned his back and he stuck his right leg out with his heel. You know that kind of odd little move where you're twisted facing the wrong way and trying to block it with your leg behind you? Yeah. Because he's too scared to get hit by a ball hit by Raheem Sterling, really, which is like being hit by a fly swat, I imagine. <laughs> he did not run at him uh, and try and shut the ball down. And then, and then the ball went in the middle of the goal. Hmm. Some day he took him off. That was my feeling about Xhaka. He took him off. He hmm. had a look. Arsene Wenger never took him off. That, that is a step up. He did take him off in That is a step up straight yeah. away. Well, he took Ramsey off before oh, the yeah, hour, didn't right, he? Yeah. yeah, but you know what? Fair enough. It wasn't working. But at least he took Xhaka off. Arsene Wenger, he played him in every game. Yeah. So that's a step up, isn't it? Gunduzi coming in to step up. You've I got like to look Gunduzi. for the positive. In a, I, I know you do. I like and I do as well. And he's great. And I, there were positives. But after those... Torreira looked good when he came on. Torreira. And once his neck. Is his neck still in Uruguay? Or is that the bit of him that's tired from the World Cup? He must have headed it a lot yeah. when he was a schoolboy. <laughs> he was 6'2". Did they play with very heavy balls? He's got, he's a real... He's quite a squat, isn't he? He's got he? no neck at all. He's not Xhaka. He's probably um, half ball jog or something like that. You know, a mastiff. They yeah. can't make him wear a club tie. They're going to have to get him a <laughs> club shoelace or something. He's got no neck at all. Where's his Adam's apple? <laughs> but, you know, looks feisty, didn't he? But, you know, he just looks sort of... Yeah. Well, he stands very tall. He has to. <laughs> he is small. He's five four. He's our shavin size. He's really relaxed yeah. with his passing. People were applauding him straight. Well, mm. we waiting for him for ten years. Oh, look at that! Yeah, the new one. People are saying they're singing Lucas Torreira to "I'm a Believer." Have you seen that? All right. And I saw his face. It was Lucas, Lucas Torreira. <laughs> Not a trace. <laughs> that in my mind. I'm in love. Ooh. Ooh. Lucas Torreira or something else, something else. <laughs> fill in your own lyrics what, 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 <laughs> so I saw it on the answers on, the, on a post on the Twitter what do we make of the Greek guy was it Socrates 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 and then we've got Mavapanos to come in so you know we're going Greek he's been that one no he? he has, he has been that. that one well Dino to but his still mates. saying it wrong it's Dino, it's Dino <laughs> to it's his mates it's the nearest he's got <laughs> a couple of weeks ago he was miles off listen <laughs> I'm all for the Greek defence because I've studied the Greek thing you know uh, thing Clash the of the Titans uh, <laughs> Jason and the Argonauts I've watched all the series of the Durrells, you know. Um, so I'm up on the Greek thing. <laughs> the Durrells. Yeah, the Durrells, you know, 300 Spartans. <laughs> Greeks, though, not, you know, they're good at defending. You know, they're known for it. So <laughs> get the other Greek guy in there. That's what we need to do. You want them there? You want them? You yes. like him? You like well, Socrates and Mavropa? A Greek Mavro. central defence. That's what we want. So he's going to put the boot in. You know, all right, we may have to play with 10 men up a lot of games, but, you know... <laughs> I think we have Mavapanos and the other guy. We're gonna, it's going to be great. Nice. And we get back Green Lanes. <laughs> yes. yeah, all the Greek restaurants suddenly become Arsenal again. Yeah, none of that Tottenham mob anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a good point you make. They'll really be turning point. around all, the, all their pictures in their restaurants, right? <laughs> well, we like Mavropanos because he was very physical when he played last season. Oh, he was May United, didn't that he? He smacked a couple of people and yeah. then he got sent off. Yeah. Was it Leicester? <laughs> sent off. Hey, all the party so. was over almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> that was that. Rob Holding, the forgotten man. man. Why isn't he in? Yeah. Well. He needs an older defender with him, doesn't he? Rob Holding, just to sort of direct him a little bit. I don't know, oh. because I watched uh, Laporte and Stones, who were a similar age, 
playing for Manchester City. How good did they look? Laporte cleared everything that went in their box. Mm. And these, these are supposed to be the backup to Otamendi and company. Yeah, but you said to me yesterday, you said, oh, you know, I said, oh, they're really good, man, sitting, you're going, he's £40 million, pound, he's £60 million. Pound. the back line. £50 yeah. million pound in every position. Yeah. It's a I'm bit whereas, of a farce, isn't it? Mm. I mean, was so- Socrates was how much? 15? Was 17 he? or whatever. 17, and yeah. Rob Holding was next to nothing. And Lichtensteiner, scrap heap challenge. He <laughs> <laughs> found him free, didn't we? Yeah. He, so noticed, I mean, he noticed Bernardo Silva, didn't he, after he'd run past him and smashed it in the net. He went, oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah. You're 34. You've done this before. Well, you, I mean, should. you should know someone's behind you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a typical Arsenal goal, wasn't it? You know, let's, yeah, let's get as far away from the attacker as possible, please. Don't go near him. I don't know. think we can judge him on yesterday. I you think know? we sh- can. Chelsea, Chelsea got <laughs> absolutely stuffed by them in the Community Shield last week. Worse than we got. Way yeah. worse, and we're playing in well, midweek. Well, I'm not. I mean, we're not. I'm not co- coating them in because, mm. as I said, to you, I, I think not. with half an hour to go, we're in it. I thought we could have got a draw, oh, and, mm. uh, and that it was an absolute sucker punch that second goal because we were starting to make chances and lack of that had a chance, and we were looking good. They were looking a little bit tired, and I thought this is. We did think it would be a chance to get them without David Silva, without De Bruyne, without Sane. Maybe there'd be an opportunity, but. We conceded early on. Mezit. It's an uphill struggle. Mezit. Where was Mezit yesterday? Where was he? Well, I don't know. One minute he's right wing, then he's number 10. Was he? he doesn't know what his, his position, position is. Yeah. What's his position? Surely with him, you go, you know what? You go where you want and we will work around you. Because well, you're the main creative force in the team. I don't think he's, Emery's going to allow him to be that way. He's going to have to chip. He's got his formation. He's 4 two, 3 one, And one of those places is going to be, where's Mezit Ozil going to play best? Feels to me like the centre of the team. That's what I would put. Getting him, him on the ball, but he's I not. Doesn't know. strike me as the sort of person to get involved in a pressing game. Though, well, right? he yeah. starts him on the right with a view, perhaps that he's going to come inside, going to get in between the lines, be hard to pick up. There's going to be too much for Fernandinho to think of if there's a few. If Ramsey's loose in there, and then Özil's loose in there as well, and maybe Bellerin can get down the right because Özil made space there. You could see the ideas, but you can't get Özil on the ball. You can't get the ball into his feet. Mkhitaryan keeps losing it. I don't. I, there's no sort of zip around the midfield passing. He's, had him, he's had him six weeks. He's had him six yeah, weeks. True, true. You know what? They're all, they're all getting used to it. They, they, the whole place need de vengifying right? I've had five years of being pampered and told, you, you, I'm not going to drop you. And and that's what they've had. That's what he's got to contend with. It's going to take years to sort this shit out. I was very sad about Maitland Niles getting an injury. Yeah, uh, we all were. Oh, oh that was shame. sad. Yeah, and he looked unhappy. At that. Carl he Walker looked it. like he'd done him a bit there. I don't know if he's I tell you, who was happy yesterday. Who? The fourth official. He didn't have Wenger in his ear yeah. hole. <laughs> And you thought, oh, this this new fella's great. He hasn't come near me once. He can't find the words in English to say to him. He doesn't <laughs> That's need what to. It is. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, at one point, he was so far out of his technical area, the other direction. <laughs> yeah. He went on the yeah towards the touchline. Yeah, didn't he? yeah, yeah he, he was, was quite right a long down way. there, probably to talk to Czech. I like uh, the fact that he work. was up. I like. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I like the fact that he was up. The other coaching staff were up. Yeah, we people were getting involved. Steve mm. Bowl got up and had a chat with the fourth official. Probably Brilliant. just to say, how are you, mate? <laughs> at least he's allowed to speak to other people. Perhaps yeah. he goes over to speak to him in a French accent but, uh, for old times. Then <laughs> I, I'm pleased with the appointment though, because we was on a train to Lyon, right, and we were getting the news that this Mikhailo, is for the final. This right? is for the final. With it, <laughs> let's let, let's draw a, a veil over our ticketing uh, agency that we set up, which fell through. But anyway, we're on a train, so we're getting the news that Mikel Arteta is going to be the next Arsenal manager. So. Alan and me, we would discuss it and totally justify, yeah, maybe it is a good appointment, man. Okay, maybe Gazidis knows something and we don't. Then 10 minutes ago past, we'd look at each other and go, oh my God, this is the worst. <laughs> this is terrible. And then talk about that and then again, go through the same thing again, trying to justify, well, Mikel Arteta might be good. So f- frankly, it was a relief when we got this guy in, you know. Because he does tick all the boxes. Yeah, I like him. He's got a great him. track record. I like him. And I enjoyed yeah. the pre-season very much. Yeah. I enjoyed the performance that we put in. We had a good performance against Atletico Madrid. Mm. And then we had we looked amazing against PSG. And Hung we had some, of the, uh, some of the young players who were playing. Reese oh, Nelson yeah, yeah, and Emile sure. Defro and one or two of the <laughs> others. <laughs> well, you're thinking, there's a future here. This looks all right. And then the people are going to come back. Uh, it's a bit more work to be done yet. Mm. There's a bit more turnover of personnel. Isn't be that the yet. best thing, though, to get this out of the way and go, oh, right, we are definitely 35 points behind them. We but, need to work. But you got to, how are you going to enjoy the season? How are you going to get through this? Cause, With low expectations. Because that stadium was nearly empty at full time. <laughs> With low expectations. People are going to stop coming, right? No, 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 they won't. I don't think they will but, this year. I think even if we finish sixth, even if we finish seventh or eighth, 
I think people will go because at least yeah, mm. as long as he plays the youngins. Oh, I'm not so sure. If we if it's mediocre, what do they want then? What do fans want? Do they I want, want to win? Yeah, I'm sure they want to win. That's how we filled it. We had a good winning team, and then gradually we didn't, and then it was empty. So you're saying <laughs> that, you're saying that Unai Emery is the wrong point? No, no, I'm not no. saying that at all. But I am, what I am saying is looking at the weekend, and granted it was extremely strong opposition, but looking at the combinations of players around the pitch and who we've got to come. I'm not seeing a team that's going to rack up enough points to get 75, 80 points, to get ahead of Tottenham, to get ahead of Liverpool. I'm thinking we might be a side that's going to come sixth or fifth or fourth if we're really lucky. Yeah. And that is not going to fill the ground. The ground is empty. And that, the people are not going to want to come. And we're playing Europa League. You wait, you wait. In. Wait till I- November and we're playing some team from Armenia in the Europa League and there will be 17,000 people in that stadium. Sure. This is what's... So it's we're going to find... A, we've got to find a new way to enjoy going down there. <laughs> Enjoy watching this. Just team imagine it's not Just imagine it's 1975. <laughs> <laughs> Think of it in those terms. We're not. We're, you can have a big bag of peanuts and break the shells all over your green flesh. <laughs> we're not. We're not having a go at the manager. It's, he's got a small budget to work with, and he shouldn't. And you can't compete. I'm not saying we should throw money like Manchester City. We haven't got that kind of money. That we Chelsea haven't. Chelsea and and but Liverpool have spent big. Yeah, like they. they how comes Liv spent 170 million? We could just spend a bit more. You're saying we haven't spent enough? Not really, no. I don't. Th- he, listen, he can only go out with a budget he's got and get the best he can with that budget. But don't you but feel with Liverpool, more. don't you feel that they've just thrown everything at it this season? I don't think they have. I think they've bought in the right places. They've spent good but, money. Well, they knew they needed money a key. They yeah. Spent. yeah, I know they spent the money, but they've got £142 they million pound for Coutinho. Yeah, Imagine. but they'd already spent that. They, they spent that <coughs> when they bought... What's his name? Virgil at centre half and the Ox, and they spent that up. That hundred and twenty is gone. This is new money mm. they're spending, yeah. and they can't do that next summer as well. They won't have it. They are going for it this year. They think we got Salah. He's in the form of his life, and Mane, Firmino. This, this is it. This is our opportunity. We've got to go for it, or we're going to. If City get hundred points, everyone's screwed, right? But if City get ninety points, they might, they might be able to run them close. Yeah. You know, but you could be in a situation like Napoli were in Italy where they have an amazing season. They get well over 80 points. Any other year, you'd think they'd be champions and they're second to Juventus because mm-hmm. they're just too far ahead. But we're not, we're not even close to them, are we? No, we're not. We're yeah, nowhere we're near. Not. So, all right, yeah, we could spend 200 million quid. I'm not saying we no. should spend 200 million, but 70 million is not, sadly, is not enough. And we have got that money, but we someone's oh, keeping you flog, it. Oh, you flog some people, right? You think, yeah. well, that is not working. We'll find a buyer. Is mm. not working. We'll find a buyer. But we didn't really move many people out, did we? I mean, we have done over yeah, the last, last year. Season, yeah. We have moved out an entire team. I mean, three people have gone. Wilsh has gone and kazola has gone and Mertzak has Giroud's gone. gone. But Walcott. also, we yeah, sold Walcott. people for quite decent money. Mm. The Ox, Walcott, Giroud. Chamberlain went, we swapped Sanchez, Gabriel went, Coquelin went, and loads of people have left. <laughs> and so we've cleared out all of those players, and we're almost, still thinking we haven't quite cleared out enough. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, more dead wood than we first imagined. Yeah. We had an entire galleon <laughs> that needs to be scrapped. Wood. We've even got rid of Usmanov. I mean, he's gone, so... <laughs> You know, he's clearing out everybody. Do you think, right, watching Ramsey, where would you, where should he play? Really, is he part of a two with Torreira? Is that where he'll try next? Will he keep? Will he play mm. Torreira and keep Guendouzi? Will he? Will he bring on any in for energy and just say let's just have a lot of energy in front of the of the back four and hope that Aubameyang and Özil and one other. I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. No, None no. at all. I, I mean, think Torreira will play against Chelsea. I've just got a feeling he looked so yeah. assured when he came on. And I'm not, I don't know about Guendouzi. I like him, but he's so youthful, he's isn't so he? He's so young. But I'm, my feeling really is I'd play as many youth as I can and most of the players that he's bought in the last year. But and I'd, days, and I'd, right? I'd knock the rest of them on the head. I don't, I don't think Mustafi's any good. I don't think Xhaka's any good. I'm having serious doubts about Hector Bellerin. I mean, I don't know. I don't need really to, rate... They all need to contribute more, don't they? And all of those players. Shall we put the new goalkeeper in. I don't care what he's been doing well, in training. What about Koscielny? I mean, is Koscielny's he going to not going to come back no, and be not. the player he no, was. He they doesn't. need another but five or six players. Do you remember when, when George took over, right? When, uh, when, when, uh, when uh, Arsene took over, we'd finished fifth, right? Yeah. And when George took over and he cleared out everyone and he played all these kids, he looked around and he thought, I've got some good kids here. And there was a real feeling, there was no expectation we'd win the league That's the point. at all. That's the point. And there was a feeling, here's somebody new, he's going to grow. In the old days, he'd have come in and said, well, look, I've got 
Maitland Niles, and I've got Iwobi, and I've got Nelson, and I've got Nketiah, and I've got old Death Row. I've got all these mm. kids. Yeah. Let's go. I let's, see how, let's see how they go for mm. a season. But yeah. I think that's the only way. With a bit of experience next to them, I think that's the only way because then at least we can get behind the team. Then you'd, enjoy, then you'd look forward to going down there. Then mm. Exactly. Then yeah. it's a team you can support. They feel like it's part of... It's a new thing. But do we think like that because we're old men? Is that what kids who go there now think? Do they want to see those I people? Th- or are there any kids down there I'm anyway? They can't afford there well, anyway, I think. No, I think, well, I think, I think that's young, true. I think that really is true. Blokes are right. We're, we're the tourists. Want it though? That's the thing. I mean, it's all right getting the tourist fans in, but if they're not watched like in the product, they'll well, go to the next shiny right, thing, then. and the next shiny thing will be up the road. You know. Well, then, then the only other choice is to spend loads of money, and I'm mm. not sure that Mr. Cronky is up for that. Oh, he's so, no. uh, you know. Why did Arsene spend 52 million on Lacazette there, and then do another 52 million on a player Des- in exactly the same Des- position? Desperation. They both want to do exactly the same delusion, thing. Delusion, and he was mad the last few years. And why did he spend when, money when on... When we had Ian Wright, and he brought in Nicholas and Elka, he, didn't, he tried an Elka and Wright together a couple of times. Ian Wright spent the entire game bollocking an Elka, who was 19, and then eventually lost his place to him and then left really in a bit of a sulk, I felt, at the time, to West Ham. I mean, if he'd stayed another year, who knows what we might have done. We might have stopped United with the treble. I always think that. But you, you felt like they couldn't play together. They're too similar. Mm. So he's gone and done that, done £100 million on two identical centre-forwards and left that. What almost are you supposed like, to do with them? Almost like he's not thinking clearly. Almost <laughs> like he spent the last 10 years looking at Al Munia and goal and going, he'll do. But and God, looking I, at Alex Song playing it at uh, holding midfield player and go, he's exactly the person for that position. Deluded. And we have got, this is the result. Oh. And we are going to have to put up with this I for the next five years. I see you, Alex Song. <laughs> I see you. And, and I raise you, Denielsen, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Denielsen. Denielsen. And you know what, Xhaka? What? Let's throw Xhaka into the mix. As Inadequate holding... central midfielders. You know, and we've all said, every single pundit, everyone has said, this is what a position that we need to sort. And at least Emery's come in and gone, oh yeah, Torreira, he's in there. Well, he's hopeful. That's not he, bad, is he? Is he not? He's hopeful that Xhaka will be with less defensive responsibility because, I mean, even with their first goal, if he'd had the desire to get over there and block it, he could have stopped it. Yeah, you can't have Xhaka's holding He didn't even goal. try to stop it. He turned off and he... Yeah. Like, He's not that guy. It's pathetic. He's not that guy. But you know, he reminds me a little bit of Edu. He's got a little bit of the passing of Edu. And Edu he had a bit pass. more balls than it, this. Edu way more. Edu way more. was tough. I'd yeah. rather have Edu, but I'm saying he hasn't got the toughness, but he can pass, Shaka. He can put. He can pass in behind. Oh, and mate. that's what... He can, he can drift it out wide to someone who's in a lot of space, but he's never going to suddenly produce a really surprising ball that opens a defence, is he? He has opened defences up, but you know what? I'm, wait, listen, I just think Emery is giving him a chance, and that's fair enough. I do think that's fair enough, but you've got to have someone there doing... He's holding. one of the five captains. Well, we need seven, don't we? We've yeah. got five. Five captains. Torreira's two. <laughs> do you, he likes 4 2 three, one. Do you think... I don't know. If it's <laughs> Torreira's going to sit... Who's going to sit with him then? Ramsey? <laughs> gonna, he, he doesn't trust Ramsey or Jack at there. I so Torreira's got to sit with someone else. El Nenny or Guendouzi. <laughs> And I protect like the back four. I like Tell Nenny in the in the preseason. I like him. Yeah, yeah I, I like him. him. You know, that's I, good. I, but I liked him with him and Gunduzi were playing. I like that. I loved all that. Hair. But that's great. Then you got the, <laughs> that's a tremendous amount it's of the hair. Best hair we've, had, we've hair. ever had. Yeah. Well, Petit had good. Yeah. yeah. Well, Gunduzi reminds me of Petit. It's got that same sort of pounding around the pitch, restless, physically powerful, yeah. likes to tackle, mm. gets his head up, always wants to pass forward. I mean, Petit was like that, dynamic. Yeah, and I like. He reminds me of him a lot. Oh, gee, I just when you see him play like that, though, I mean, surely the other players are going, "Well, he's putting a shift in." Do you yeah, think well, I stop should? Stop showing us up, mate. Yes, Calm exactly. Down. I mean, that's. I mean, <laughs> all right. They could tell that the crowd all right. was behind Settle him. down, son. We want to. <laughs> six places, all right. If you keep going <laughs> like that, we're going to have some awful games in the running. <laughs> Stressful, loads of pressure. Can we finish fourth? We don't want that. <laughs> we're done and dusted. End of March. You're open league's fun. We enjoy it. <laughs> Whole weeks have worked out. We might, we might yet win the international champions cup, which is which still. is still going on. <laughs> and the, I actually went on the website to try and work out how we were doing. It's Did, absolutely incomprehensible. Who, 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 who won it? It's still Genuinely. going on. There's still games going on. I don't know. <laughs> 
Hey, it's a trophy. I'll take it. I don't think they've given it to anyone. (laughs) It's one more than Spurs. Most peculiar thing. It still made me think, is this what football's going to look like in the future? This is what it's going to look like. It's a massive pan-European league with fixtures taking place all over the world. Shanghai, three o'clock in the morning kick-off. It will. That's what what they all want. I tell you what they all want. Why do you think they all go to America and Asia pre-season? That's where all the fans are Ah. who will lap up this garbage that we get served up, right? They won't lap up our garbage. That's the point, isn't it? Stan Kroenke has bought the club. It's... assuming that we're actually going to finish in the top four because get into that European Super League, but we might not. You can't grow the club in England, right? It's full. You can't grow it. Mm. Give it a couple of years. And you can't. If you win the league a couple of times, you get more <laughs> fat. But you can't. But you can grow it in Asia, right? Okay. And that's all they think about. Yeah. That's all they think about. And then what, what will happen is that they'll, they'll go, right, I'll tell you where, the, the, where England are playing competitive games out there. They'll go, right, I'll tell you what, League Cup final will make it two legs. First leg in Singapore second leg at Wembley and they'll do that and then they'll bring that in with the FA Cup and then sooner or later and then there'll be a couple of games from the Premier League played away, out there good away trip that Singapore Singapore yeah, yeah. Quite nice. it's a bit bland I think. <laughs> well we can go to Thailand yeah. well that's how Two they'll bring it in I know where I want to go Hanoi <laughs> Hanoi <laughs> Carabao yeah. Cup final in Hanoi Saigon my friend yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. we'll leave by chopper <laughs> <laughs> Last one's out. Last one out. That's where that is Saigon with the carabao. So, how do you feel? Has anyone about... had any carabao, Keith? Did you ever get any carabao? It's not energy drink, isn't it? it? No, I'm, I'm is a... it an energy oh, drink. Gwen Doozy's absolutely shot through of it. <laughs> so, how do we feel about Stan having total control of our club? Well, you know, I'm upset. I'm mean, rightly so. Well, you know, I'm upset. Yes, I know I've you're been upset, upset about it. Th- it affected me. Let it go. I call. I have to. I've got no choice. Tell us about it. Well, I have two shares. Two shares. And I invested in that in those two shares. And I thought, I've got shares in Arsenal now. Yeah. And you then, know, for life. Pass them down to pass your children. Pass them to the children. Then I had a third child. Well, no, I'm going to have to try and accumulate another share. And not, it, not so easily done, it no. turns out. And then you wake up, there's a couple of bailiffs outside. Give us your shares back. Yeah, I said to Keith, he's gonna, he wants my shares. Keith said, tell him you want cash. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll meet him at midnight. Right, right away service. Yeah. Put the crooked billet roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> Preferably. It's as good a place as any. Yeah. There's a lot of exits, though. <laughs> One can get lost. Get very easy yeah. off. Just, and it's very hard to find your way back to it. Just flash your lights two times. We'll come out, meet you halfway. We'll come to you. Yeah. With, a bug, with a big bag I of said cash. come along. <laughs> Karanka. <laughs> Take off your sunglasses. You can't see where you are. <laughs> You've got, to, you've got to sell them. You've got no choice, right? They've got no choice. Ushmanov's finally given up the ghost. Can't blame and I, I presume he's going to end up at Everton, pumping them full of billions, and maybe they'll do a Man City, which would be hilarious, just at the moment when Liverpool have thrown everything up oh, in the league. Be, no. That would be good. Yeah, that would be funny. But, you know, that's what's happening now. He doesn't have to compulsorily buy all the shares. He could have set the club up and said, I do want to retain a minority shareholding amongst existing fans nothing his shares have gone down in, through generations I understand that loyalty to the club is greatly appreciated we're going to have that. someone on the board who relies with that organisation to hear their concerns hear their voice but I do run the club and I'm going to hire and fire as I please that's, that's, that has to be understood mm. and you'd have thought alright it's a gesture it's, but no it's just it, it says in the document which is a very long and very confusing and very tiny print it says basically he thinks that private ownership's the way to go, and there's no reason given for that. And there is no mention made of Bayern Munich or Real Madrid or Barcelona. None of them are privately owned, and have absolutely dominated football for the last ten years. So I don't believe you. Actually, I just think you want it for yourself, and you want to make decisions without consulting anyone, and you don't want to hear from the fans. You don't want to go to the shareholders meeting that makes your flesh crawl. You probably really would like to say some expletives at Arsenal supporters all round. <laughs> and when your face comes up on the big screen in the last game of the season, and you get booed. <laughs> Your solution is one finger up at them, I'll take it all for myself. And the other thing I suspect is that maybe Arsene Wenger being there stopped it happening somehow. Mm. That Wenger might have said, I don't think this is the way it uh, Usmanov stopped it happening. Arsene Wenger... Don't, I don't well, think... maybe Wenger leaving is the cue for Usmanov to up sticks. I mean, I mean... In, the, in the end, putting aside your personal upset at the two shares and you have to, give them, you have to sell them to Stan, 
we're like Chelsea, we're like Liverpool, we're like Man United, we're like most of the big teams now, aren't we? Man City. I mean, they're all owned by private individuals. Yeah, but we countries. could. The point is, we could have gone the other way, yeah. and we could have followed a model that's followed by huge clubs in Spain and Germany. We could have increased fan involvement. He had the option. If you look at Manchester City, though, those guys have come in. Not only have they given them a fantastic team and stadium, but they've done a lot of work in the community. I can't see Stan Kroenke putting down a plastic pitch in Islington anywhere. No. You know, he's not going to do anything like that. I mean, he hasn't even spoken to us. He hasn't put anything in the programme. There's no, not one word. I mean, we, maybe we should have a statue where you go up and put 20p in and his, his voice talks to you. Hang on a I would put 20p in yeah, there. I don't really want to give him any more yeah. money. His mouth opens and it's silent. <laughs> it's just something. And? You know. No, it doesn't, it doesn't say anything, mate. Doesn't no. say anything. I mean, mate, we know, I don't he even know care, what he it? sounds doesn't. like. Maybe he's got a high pitched voice. Maybe he's like, I'm Stan Kronka. I'm Stan like this. <laughs> Joe Pasquale. He sounds like <laughs> Joe Pasquale. We last night. We had him down as Monty Burns. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yes, yeah. Right. Let's get all the shares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what he's like. He doesn't care. Yeah. But it just says private ownership is the way to be dynamic or something. Real just waffle, piffle, rubbish. It's just about him. Not I a single proper reason money. given. I be s- honest, you want it all for yourself. But he's borrowing £600 million to do it. Well, he, he he's got, but none of that is going to be paid back from the clubs. Well, he, look, he, he owns the Los yeah. Angeles. What he said. <laughs> this is the clubs he owns. The Los Angeles Rams, The uh, that's the football team. And then it's the Denver Nuggets. That's basketball. And then he's got uh, hockey, Colorado Avalanche. What names he get these <laughs> I love teams? This, Bloody rubbish, isn't it? Keeps Colorado written, Crush. Written down, ladies Colorado and gentlemen. Mammoths. The Colorado <laughs> Rapids. Are you making these up? I tell you what, I hope Colorado's an earthquake zone. There's a good chance he might die. But, uh, <laughs> but no, well, is this going to go to his son, Keith? Well, yeah, maybe we're not getting Maybe they'll be on a camping trip together. Who knows? But I mean. Uh, well, he is going to give it to his son. And people had a go at me say, well, what are you out? Oh, you want to give your shares to your kids? Well, he's giving them to his kids. Yeah. Why is that different? We all want to give our shares. Look, we like being part of the club. People we love a, the club. People are having a go at you. Yeah, on Twitter. It doesn't no, count. Yeah. Fair enough. Absolutely full of idiots, isn't it? Yep. But it's just, it felt like a sad day. I felt upset about it, but I know there'll be people who feel much strong, more strongly than I do. I've only had the shares 10 years, and relatively recently, there'll be people whose shares have been handed down since the 30s. Well, there'll be people who won't you go. Know? There'll be people who go, I'm, I sit, I'm finished with the club. I have no connection with the club. I don't want to go. And it's hard to have a connection, isn't Ooh. it? I was looking at the team yesterday and thinking, who do I love out of this team? Not really many of them. Oh, that's, the a good, that's a good one. I, love, I like I the Conservative, but genuinely, mm. if you think about the teams that we've watched and who we've loved in those teams, mm. I don't really get that feeling from them. I mean, hopefully they can, you know, win my love, <laughs> but they're going to have to work out. How deep, really, is, your love? How well, deep is your love? Well, <laughs> right now, not that deep. <laughs> the really sad thing is when... when so you're was... not in love? <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, stop. In the name of love. <laughs> What's love got to do with it? <laughs> well, exactly. We used to look at the side and compare it to previous title winning sides and say, well, look at this lad, this Denilson. He's not as good as Gilberto Silva. Fabregas is wonderful. He hasn't got people to play with. Now we can't. We've forgotten them. No. They're so far away. Nothing. It's no point going, well, we're a long way behind Manchester City. We're just a long way behind where we should be with a dynamic, progressive, attacking football. We've been football. left. We've you know? been left with uh, just a terrible, quite a patchy But the squad. good news is that Tottenham can't afford to buy any players. Oh, I wonder they can't why. Even move into they can't even move into the toilet bowl because <laughs> it's not safe. It's blocked. Because it's got a massive blue it's lump blocked. floating around it, which is toxic. And everyone's going to have to turn up in marigolds and face masks. <laughs> Big massive plunger. They're going to have to shove a massive plunger. Have to put a plunger. <laughs> I tell you what, it was. I tell you, it was so funny. Is it cleared yet? No. Have you haven't again. seen? Have you haven't seen an aerial photograph of uh, Tottenham's new behemoth? Uh, have a look at it. The, well, arch- uh, the architect's name is on the top, Armitage Shanks. <laughs> that was so funny. So because I'd, I'd driven past it recently, and I thought to myself. It looks like a lavatory seat. It is a lavatory seat. And I thought, well, I'll mention this to Alan, but he'll, yeah, he won't believe me. And then the first thing Sunday after the game, he said, have you seen Tottenham's ground? Look at that. <laughs> it's a lavatory Loads seat. Loads of yeah, photos. It's all over it. the interweb. It's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Oh, They've love to built have... an enormous toilet. You got The architect must have been <laughs> Not a Not completely. Not okay. completely. They haven't quite finished, they haven't quite finished their enormous <laughs> toilet. Do you reckon Levy... They haven't finished the system. Surely they must have seen some photos. I mean, Levy, 
I mean, did he go into the architect's office and the architect said, uh, no, I've only got one set of photos, this side angle, you know, no. Have you got any other photos? No, sorry, just this one. I've only ever done this one mock-up. <laughs> and then they've built it. And that's why there's a delay, because they're going to go, oh, for Christ. It's too much like a toilet. It's a lavatory seat. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, best place for them. I've always said a good place for a Spurs fan with a head in a lavatory seat, you know, <laughs> probably. Oh, and that's another thing. During the World Cup, they wound me up. Who? Spurs fans, who do you think? <laughs> right, no other, no other football supporter bragged about their players playing in the World Cup, apart from one group, one bunch. We're going to win the World Cup, Harry Kane, dear. The only we're winning the World Cup. Then we get knocked out. It's suddenly, it's all about England, doesn't it? It's not about Tottenham, it's about England. <laughs> then when Harry gets the golden boot and the French guy in the national wins the World Cup, it's suddenly Tottenham won the World Cup again, haven't we? Harry Kane, got golden... I think you deluded morons. Even Linda had to say one of her relatives was an idiot. <laughs> you know, she said, "If you seen what's putting on Facebook, it's, come, said, it's, it's come to this." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're mad, totally. To be fair, mad. we couldn't really boast about our participation in the World we Cup. We had no one there, but we what, had you know? uh, Nacho no. Monreal had a great tournament. <laughs> Most of our players play for countries that aren't even in it. There's that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Shaka. Armenia and Gabon yeah. and Jacka, Wales. Jacka was it for a while, wasn't he? He was, Jacka, in it? Didn't look too bad. He had to pay a fine, didn't he? Because he'd done some gesture. Scored a goal, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He made a, made a gesture you on see when, of Kosovo. When Raheem Sterling came off yesterday and some bloke was shouting at him, going, well, you did that for Man City, why didn't you do that for England? <laughs> oh, and I thought it was mad. Idiots. Absolutely <laughs> mad person behind us. Oh, 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 he, oh, I would never understand the stick he gets, Sterling. I would never understand. Understand. He had a go. I mean, the World Cup. I thought you listen. I, I was proud of the way they played. Uh, sadly, though, we needed Jack. I think in the Croatia game, and that's that's. I think we. Jackie Wilshire, Super yeah. Jack. I think in that ga- that one game we needed someone to unpick the lock in midfield, and we didn't have anyone. Well, you we should have had a couple of players like that on the bench. Well, I said it from the. Mm. We could do the World Cup for hours, but I thought in the first game against Tunisia, he looks along the bench. It's one all. I think this is like, this is not a good result. Mm. And who can we bring on to unlock it? And he hasn't got Wilshire, he hasn't got Lalana, he didn't even take John Joe Shelby, who was the best English passer of a ball in the Premier League last. He didn't take any of them. No. So he looks along the bench, he thinks, well, I'm not going to put on Vardy or Welbeck, but they're your top, most experienced strikers, and you need a goal. No, I'm going to go with Rashford, who's a kid. Mm. Fantastic talent, but really, really young and inexperienced. And Loftus Cheek. I tell you, this is an overrated football. Alan's not a fan of Ruben <laughs> Loftus. This guy has got a long way to go. He may become a great central midfielder in the Premier League. I don't know. Not but for Chelsea. Keith, not and I went, Keith and I went to, to Crystal Palace last season and watched Arsenal win and watched Jack Wilshere outplay the entire Palace midfield. Johan Kabaya, never mind Loftus Cheek, who was anonymous. So mm. the idea that he would get picked. Now I know he got lo- he got loyalty to the under twenty one team. He likes young players. I do not understand. We're building for tournaments in the future. That is garbage to me. This is it now. This is the actual World Club. And you need, no. you need grown-ups on your bench. So he took people like Alexander-Arnold mm. shouldn't have gone. Loftus-Cheek shouldn't have gone. Probably Phil Jones shouldn't have gone. And then you can open up three spots. And then he's got well back to the fourth the fourth place match, the third, fourth place match. Harry Kane's dead on his feet. Obviously mm. dead on his feet. And he doesn't even give Welbeck a game in that. So I just... I, I understand it's exciting. Mm. I was as excited as anyone else. I was great. leaping around my living room great. in the penalty shootout. Mm. The Sweden game, it was great. But ultimately, I felt we fell short for reasons that were predictable from the Tunisia match. But there you are. Uh, there you are. Good tournament, though. Good, great, great tournament. It. I've never I watched so many it. matches. I, was just... I loved it. And the French side was superb. Uh, and I think the VA worked. Didn't it? The VAR, it worked. On, on the whole. On the whole. There was a few decisions. If, if a referee's yeah. panicked and uh, yeah. on the verge of making a mistake, yeah. watching it 12 times over in a box doesn't seem to help. <laughs> yeah. When the sweat's running into his eyes and his heart's pounding and he's, got, he's out of breath and he's thinking, is that a penalty or not a penalty? <laughs> Someone's help me! Someone's help me! It's on there you, was mate. A bit of that. Yeah. The whole world's watching you. <laughs> Watching the telly. Watch he the can't telly. even go into a little booth. He should be able to go into a booth and have a cry. <laughs> <laughs> and ask someone else. He still can't. God. And when you see all those replays, we're all, I'm going, well, oh, I don't know. Glad it's not me. I would have enjoyed the match. I was in Portugal watching it in our apartment. and But sadly, they had the screen somewhere else. So my watching it, on, it was about a minute behind. So I could hear all these French people jumping around. And I'm thinking... They're going to score in a minute, aren't they? And they did, obviously. Which was this, the final? <laughs> yeah, the final. Oh, right, okay. They got a big wad of luck, didn't they? They really did. France? Yeah. Best team in the tournament, though. Well, oh, I definitely. didn't think it was a pen, though, did you? No, it wasn't a penalty. No. 
that, no. that one where it hit his arm. No. I the trouble so. with those things even a freak is, kick. and this is a big problem, <laughs> I think, with with VAR, you, ca- you shouldn't be watching it in slow motion. Hmm. Because in slow motion, it really looks like he's reaching down to put his hand in front of the ball. But in real time, it's happened in the blink of an eye. It's a, totally a reflex. You can't even see the ball. Yeah. And it's hit him on the arm completely by accident. Yeah. You cannot give a penalty for that. It's about, not in a World Cup final. It's too mm. big a decision. And he, and he got it right at the time because he could see it in real time. That guy hasn't handled that. It's, if yeah. anything, he's putting his hand down. So I thought that was wrong. Yeah, it was definitely. But the best team won. I thought mm. Matuidi was absolutely superb. No one mentioned him, probably because he doesn't play in the Premier League, mm. right? So there's a lot of talk about Conte and Pogba, and Pogba they were was, brilliant. Pogba was great. They were brilliant, and, and Lloris uh, had a good tournament. But <laughs> and Giroud's a World Cup winner. Giroud's a World Cup winner. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have thought, one shot. I thought unfairly, though, he yeah. got criticised. Yeah. Because a lot he of centre-forwards were struggling in those knockout games. Yeah. A lot of teams were surrounding mm. the centre-forward and not allowing teams to go up and play off them. Harry Kane struggled. He got Higuain struggled. Mm. And so and so did Giroud. It wasn't easy for, for centre forwards to score because there were thick defences and people mm. trying to play counter attacking football. So it meant people in wider positions with pace got the opportunities. He did all the work, didn't he? He deserved oh, yeah, it. He he work. Work. Oh, yeah, he worked hard. Good there. luck to him. Good I'll luck fist him, you know. And he's kept out Kareem Benzema and he's kept out Lacazette and and they are it's a World Cup winner. Can't argue with that. Him and Frank LaBeouf. No one can believe him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, Carl Jenkinson might be leaving the club. Uh, any thoughts? What, uh, uh, How sorry. old is he now? Forty-two. Uh, say, yeah, he must be getting on a bit. But I testimonial. Years, I didn't know he was still there. Yeah, I know. That's all what I mean. I mean <laughs> He's been on loan so many places. I feel for people like that because he loves our club. But I mean, he's not some, good enough, though, mate. Well, he's not good enough. But nobody, even not even Fulham or Wolves or you know, somebody. I mean, <laughs> no, no disrespect. No, <laughs> he's good enough for Wolves, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but no one he wants. No, it's it's weird. Weird. it is weird. Yeah. I mean, but they can't him. see him play. Was he playing in the reserves or on loan or whatever? They can't well, see. He him went play. on loan at West Ham. He was at West Ham for a while, wasn't yeah. he? And he was injured for a while. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, hopefully he'll get a club. He's Arsenal man. He's listen. He's a fan. Yeah, twenty five yeah. on his back because he if loves he, Carnot. He's a fantastic bloke. If in years to come you've sat down in front of us or next to us, you've had some former players sitting near us. We'll welcome him. I like him because he grew up near where I grew up, and I'm sort of strangely biased towards those players. Although yeah. Harry Kane uh, <laughs> went to the same school as my mum, and I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also the same school as David Beckham. And I would like you to point out that my mum was not as thick as Harry Kane as David <laughs> Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but okay. I always read about Harry Kane. I'm quite yeah. interested in Harry Kane at the moment. This, there's a bit of a story going around that he was at Arsenal for a year and then we left him and Tottenham snapped it up. But that's not what happened. It's not what happened. They did take him and then they dropped him as well. Ah. And then he went back to schoolboy football and then when he was a bit older, he was at Watford and he was playing for Watford under 11s or something against mm. Tottenham in central midfield and Tottenham took him at age 11. And then he was on loan at Leicester, at Norwich, at Orient, at Millwall. Played all these places on loan before suddenly breaking through and in only got in And only got in because Soldado was terrible. Yeah. Soldado couldn't score, so they had to bring him in from the UEFA Cup, a Europa Cup team. And suddenly, age 20, he's absolutely exploded and everything's going in. So what you're saying is that could happen to Carl Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we sell him suddenly. You're like, oh, he no, needs to go on four more loans, the and then he comes the back. Ballon d'Or, and Carl he's, uh, Roberto Carlos. <laughs> you know when uh, sometimes when managers move to new clubs and they go back to their old club. And I was thinking of David Moyes going back for Fellaini or whatever, and they buy a couple of the old players that they liked. You know, and uh, I'm, I'm waiting for Arsene Wenger to take somewhere and then bring back Johan Juru and Carl Jenkins <laughs> and Alex Song. <laughs> 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 and, and, and Joel Campbell and all them people. Is he still at it? Joel Campbell? Yeah, Campbell's can't get rid of him still, either. Yeah. <laughs> David Ospina is obviously not winning. Has he not gone yet, Ospina? No. no. Well, he's, he's on a good contract in London. He obviously ain't bothered about playing in the Premier League. Eleven million pound house. He likes playing for Colombia, and he'll get games in the. But he won't even get games in the Europa League now. No. Uh, no. Who will play in goal at Chelsea? <sighs> Well, he'll go with Let's Czech. put you on the spot. He'll go, I think, no, he'll, he'll I'm not so Czech. sure he will. We only have to watch that game. If he wants to pass out from the back, Czech is not your man. Unless well, you want to put a defender on the line every well, time he tries to pass the ball. Maybe we should play Just Leno and Czech. <laughs> Well, let's hope the other... no play centre out. Well, well, let's hope the other guy is we've just bought. I mean, it'll be a bit of a thing. He goes, "Are you good with it?" You know, Bayer Labour. The Bayer Labour Q's in the Twitter feed put yeah. tweets up about Czech 
Saying? Saying, well, showing his terrible near own goal. Oh, and they then, were taking the piss. Uh, yeah, and ah. then and showing a clip of Leno making a pass at the, at the beginning of a move that led to a fantastic goal. And, ah. and generally, the, the German Twitter feeds do generally have a lot of fun at our expense. Wow, trolling you. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God! I wondered where that came from. Yeah. Ryan Check got talked about. You look up professionalism and all this stuff. Blimey! Oh, yeah. I well. think I think he's right. I think he'll play Czech. He'll keep Czech Do you think? Goal. I think Licksteiner will play at left back for the next few games, and uh, he'll probably keep the rest. Will be largely the same. He might make room for Torreira, so mm. someone's going to get the bullet in midfield. Torreira has to just sit. He's on got hazard. to pick Ramsey if mm. he wants him to sign. Got to pick mm. him, right? But where? Where's he playing? Doesn't There's matter. Just, he's not playing centre forward. If he loses him at the end of the season, he's thrown away thirty-five million quid. So he's got to keep him and make him sign. Yeah. You're gonna to have to play Ramsey, mate. Mm. Oh, but he was awful. Whether yeah. we well, or not, don't play him at centre forward. <laughs> play him in midfield. In his position. Just yeah. Now he plays for, for I Wales. I would say play Torreira and Ramsey. That's yeah, what I would yeah. say. And have Guendouzi ready with the hair. I think we should have a meet set up a meet with him and I and let him know. Just a say, meet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We could put him straight on so many things, you know. <laughs> so listen, when you wake up in the morning, right, and or if you take a training session, they go, boss, we've learned from our mistakes in Europe. Take That is a big no-no, right? They've never learned from any mistake in Europe. That's a given, right? We will give goals away cheaply. You know, we could give him all this info, you know. I think he's watched it, mate. Do you reckon? Yeah. But what if he hasn't, though? <laughs> well, in I that mean, case, we're assuming yes. in that case, Keith, <laughs> that's a good hasn't? idea. <laughs> but assuming that <laughs> no. he's watched it, he could be just. Well, I think safe to assume that he's very familiar. He could be just sitting at home. Very familiar. He could be going. <laughs> was what, part... Watch the Arsenal DVD or Netflix. Arsenal DVD. Ne- oh, it's better call Souls on. I'm going to watch that. He knew about the it. reserves and the youth. Apparently, in the interview. Did he? Yeah, he was very impressive in the interview. Knew all oh, about. Oh, you watched the interview then? No, I haven't. No. <laughs> oh, see, he's just they making it up now, it. Then, ain't he? That's what I heard. My sources. Oh, your sources. Sources <laughs> tell us. And there's no sign of Arsene Wenger. Where's he gone? A hey, well. Totter, as you said. He's. Uh, he's. <laughs> Ask he pizza. said he's going to get another job, go back into football, but he's had three months off and thought, oh, I don't really. Know. Yeah. Well, well, has healthy. he thought that, or has no one offered him a job? I'm sure he could have a job if he wanted a job. Where? Some other club. Barnet. <laughs> Barnet is Barnet. definitely up. Yeah. Barnet, yeah. <laughs> Playing the conference. Or yeah. Regan, you know, I mean. As soon as, uh, as soon as the club gets in trouble, the first firings happen what, normally in November. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if Mourinho gets a bullet, Wenger's name will be bandied about. Just you wait. Uh, Ooh. There is no Ooh. way Man United will take Arsenal. The Wenger. bookies will put will, the bookies will take your money, my friend. It'll be there for 15, 20, 12 to 1. Yeah. 12 to <laughs> 1. <laughs> All right. Do you think it's more likely? <laughs> Are we starting this rumour now? Is this like a butterfly effect? We're starting this now. It's like an El Nino thing, isn't it? It's just going to happen now from here. Zidane will be even. Just, but Wenger will be on the list. Wenger will be on the list, fourth or fifth. Wenger. He was on every list, but I just think a lot of jobs will be beneath him. People would say, it's somebody who gets sacked, uh, I don't know, whoever, Everton or someone, right? And they'll go, Arsene Wenger? They'll go, no, we can't ask Arsene Wenger. A but, lot of people think they won't like retirement. But then it comes along and he's lovely. Well, he looked, he looked very happy. I mean, he was in that punt he in should Cambridge. Be happy. I he hope had he an wasn't doing career. it. Career, yeah. He's respected the world over. He's not short of a few. Bob. He's rich. Yeah. He's popular. Yeah. He's he's should just write a, a brilliant coaching book and give lectures. Do a bit of punditry yeah. once in he a while. He could have a, run his own vineyard. The Arsene <laughs> Wenger wine. He'd be good at that, wouldn't he? That's a good idea. Yeah, look, You've got a lot of good ideas yeah, today, I'm, I'm Open the library. <laughs> Because philosophy department. Philosophy. Yeah, yeah. I still like the vineyard. I mean, you can do both. Yeah, the vineyard. Or yeah. a bottle of Vengas. <laughs> oh yeah, Ooh. couple of bottles of Vengas. Ne- ne- of... <laughs> no, red. Surely red. red. <laughs> well, red and white. That's what you're going to go. For. Oh you know, my God, Keith. Yes. He likes. Uh, I know what he does like, and you'd be surprised. He likes desserts. Oh. He, likes, he likes a pudding. He likes a little pudding. He likes a little mousse. <laughs> You'd be surprised he's got a little sweet too. Has he? I wouldn't be surprised there wasn't a little range of puddings coming up. <laughs> so what you're saying is... Dessert. Wenger desserts. Tat limon. <laughs> Mr. The Wenger. Awesome, the Arsene Wenger range. You know, like yeah. Paul Newman salad cream. Yeah, yeah the Arsene Wenger puddings. Arsene Wenger like tart Mr. limon. Ki- like Mr. Kipling. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Mr. Wenger, Wenger makes exceedingly good cakes. <laughs> yeah. Exceeding yeah. yeah. noir. <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll see you later. Bye.